everybody, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Co. And today we are going to be talking about what is um, somewhat actually of a controversial subject, and that is tracing and light boards in regard to watercolors. Um, so I would go as far as to say uh, most um, traditionally uh, professionally trained artists will tell you that you shouldn't use any sort of tracing um, or light boards or anything like that because um, it's not original or it's cheating or whatever. And um, the same people will also say that you really need to know how to draw before you learn how to paint. And um, I agree with those statements like 20 to 25 percent. Definitely, definitely not. I don't even half agree. Um, and I'll go into why here. So first of all, um, from personal experience, I can tell you that you don't need to know how to draw to know how to paint. And um, I say that because I really am not a very good drawer or sketcher. Um, and I know that. I, I much prefer painting. I tried a lot of other art before I got to watercolors. And, you know, when I tried drawing then, I didn't like it then. I don't really care for it now. Um, so I can tell you that I've created a lot of things that I liked, that I painted, um, without knowing how to draw. So I don't think, in my personal opinion, you do not need to know how to draw before you know how to paint. Um, now, and I, and I paint all sorts of different subject matter, so I, I feel like I can say that. Um, I will say, however, though, with portraits and, you know, still lifes, and for certain subject matter, you do want to draw something, you know, or at least I, I always draw something, I find it helpful. So um, let's go on to light boards and tracing here. So... If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say light board, um, here's an example of a light board. Oh, Ta-da! Um, so this one, I've got it plugged in right now. Basically a light board is um, a, source of, wait, a source of light, <laughs> keep it on there, and um, you can take a pre-existing image, so here's just like a plain little sketch, and you can put a new piece of paper on top, and basically you can see through enough so that you can draw on the blank sheet of paper from the drawing underneath. Now you can do something similar to this by holding um, a drawing and a fresh piece of paper up to a bright window, um, sort of the poor man's light box, but um, that's basically what I mean when I say light box. So just in case you hadn't heard of them before. Um, so let's go into my, my opinion of them. First of all, tracing. So um, now this is my personal opinion, remember. I don't think there's anything wrong with tracing under certain circumstances. So the first circumstance I think it's okay to trace would be, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, <laughs> would be uh, if you don't want to draw directly on your watercolor paper. So I really don't like to draw directly on my watercolor paper. I, I just think it's too much pressure and, you know, I feel like whenever I'm drawing on watercolor paper, I end up erasing a lot and it sort of leaves, you know, those ugly inevitable eraser smudges and it just looks kind of grimy when um, all is said and done if I do my um, original sketch on my watercolor paper. And also what can happen sometimes, um, especially if you're not using uh, high cotton content paper, is if you erase too much in a certain spot, you can get this sort of weird, smooth surface that like repels paint, like it won't let you paint on it afterwards. And like I said, it's particularly prevalent in um, cheaper watercolor papers. But so anyway, for quite a few reasons, I really don't like to draw right onto a piece of watercolor paper. So what I usually do, and I always do this with portraits, is I draw on a piece of sort of scrap paper first. This is just a sketch, um, a quick one I did earlier today. And I'm accidentally turning this thing on. <laughs> um, a quick one I did earlier today. And um, I did it on a piece, this is just a piece of copy paper, not even real drawing paper. And I did quite a bit of erasing until I was happy with it. And now it's good. And now I wanna put it on my watercolor paper. So um, I can just take my light board and we'll light it up again here on purpose this time. <laughs> There we go. And I can take a piece of fresh watercolor paper, lay it on top, and I would normally um, tape this down with a couple pieces of masking tape to make sure it doesn't shift while I draw. And I can just see my drawing underneath and I can just go right over it, no erasing, no smudging, no harming my paper or drawing too dark or whatever. I have more control, I feel like. This is like my rough draft to this being my final copy when I trace it. So that's probably what I use light boards for the most is to take uh, drawings that I've done on some other paper and get them onto my watercolor paper. Now that being said, there is something else you can do um, for transferring drawings 
and I believe it's with graphite paper. Now, I don't do this personally, so I'm not gonna demo it, um, but uh, if you are, or graphite paper, not graph paper, huh? Um, <laughs> um, so with graphite paper, I'm pretty sure, like don't hold me to this, but I'm pretty sure what you do is uh, the graphite paper is basically a big sheet of pencil lead, uh, more or less, and you just sort of draw over your sketch and the graphite transfers onto the paper from the pressure. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Like I said, I don't do it because I think this is just a lot easier. And also I can't help but um, feel that like a whole sheet of graphite is just gonna sort of be dirty or get on my fingers or this just feels like much cleaner and faster to me to use a light board. So, um, but if the, the transferring with graphite paper is something you're interested in, feel free to look into that. Um, but I'm not gonna speak to it here cause I do not do it personally. So the other circumstance um, that happens to me most often where I would use my light board is a sort of sketchbook circumstance. And let me grab my sketchbook here. So let's see. Okay, so say um, hypothetically that I do a sketch in my sketchbook and um, I decide that I want, instead of it being a sketchbook page, I want it to be its own separate watercolor. You know, I want to be able to frame it. I don't want to have to cut it out of my sketchbook. So this, for example, is sort of a little mountain stream sort of scene. You know, we got peaks up here, some foliage, some more rocks, um, a stream, boulders, that sort of thing. And it's pretty rough at this point um, because I kept messing with the composition. I couldn't get it the way I wanted it. Um, so it's got a lot of eraser marks and it's not like the best. So, and also it's in my sketchbook. So if I decide that I want it out of my sketchbook. You know, I've already spent all this time on this drawing. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna draw it again on another piece of paper? Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. I've already done the work. So what I would do is I would fold my sketchbook. I don't know if you, how well you can see what I'm doing. I'm isolating this single page. I've got the rest of the sketchbook here and I'm holding it. And I would take my light board and normally I'd put a two pound weight over here. Um, just like a little, you know, hand weight. I would put that over there to keep the rest of the sketchbook in place turn on the whiteboard to the highest setting. And um, you do really need to use the highest setting for watercolor paper just because it's quite thick. Put a new piece of watercolor paper on top and um, you can see the drawing underneath and I can copy it and there you go. I've got a sketch that I worked on in a sketchbook but now I can have it as an individual painting too so it gives me options. And actually this is a little bit harder to see. Like this would be easier if we were in a darker spot and if both sheets weren't watercolor paper. So that's, that's I think the hardest to see through is when both the example and the new sheet are both watercolor paper. So, but there's just two circumstances that I run into actually quite often. And um, you know, the light board just saves me a lot of time and frustration. Like I don't have to redraw something if I already put in the work and I don't have to have the pressure of getting it right the first time with a piece of watercolor paper. So those are my reasons for liking light boards and for liking tracing. Now, um, here's my, my overview of tracing would be um, like, I think it has a place. So if you're tracing your original drawings, like the two examples I showed, um, that's totally fine. You're not copying anything, you're not cheating, you are working smarter and not harder, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, however, it definitely don't ever trace other people's work or other people's photos. Don't do that. That's not cool. Don't do that. Um, that is, you know, that's stealing. That's not just cheating. So don't do that. And also you rob yourself of the opportunity to create something original, which is much more fun anyway. So don't do that. Don't use tracing for that. Don't go to the dark side. <laughs> um, and then there's sort of the gray area, um, which is tracing photos that you've taken. So I will admit that I have done this. I have traced photos that I took myself um, onto a piece of watercolor paper uh, for one of two reasons. Either I wanted to save time or I didn't feel confident in my ability to draw the subject freehand. So that's kind of a gray area and a personal choice. Um, if it's drawing or tracing from a photo that you took yourself, it's not cheating, it's not copying. Well, it is kind of cheating, but it's not copying. Um, so there's nothing wrong with, you know, there's nothing wrong with using something that was yours the whole time. But I do think that um, that it sets you back as an artist. And I, I say that because I have traced photos that I've taken before. And I, I just, I feel like it just sets you back. Um, sorry, I keep turning this thing on actually. Um, I feel like it sets you back because it really will help you, particularly if you do portraits of any kind. It'll really help you to get a sense on your own freehand 
of um, proportion and tones and you know all the fun things that drawing can offer you and like I said I don't like to draw but I do feel better that I you know kept trying and I I draw as much as I feel I can and want to at this point like I sort of pick and choose but I I don't trace from my photos anymore because I sort of ventured out to try to get better as a sketcher so um, that's the gray area, sort of personal choice. Um, so on, so on this side, there's you can absolutely trace if it's your original thing. That's totally fine. Save time. There's the other side, which is never trace other people's work or other people's photos. That's not cool. And then there's the middle, which is just your choice. You can trace your photos if you want to. That's up to you. Um, but like I said, I do recommend you at least try a little bit of sketching on your own. I think it will make you a better artist. It made me a better artist. So. Okay, so <laughs> now that we've gotten all that off our chest, um, let's talk about light boards themselves, so what to look for. So let me actually get a different one up here right now. So this first one that I'm bringing over here, this is the first light board I ever got. It's pretty big, this is my hand in proportion to it. Here's the edge, here's the other edge, here are the sides. Um, I don't know the exact dimensions. It has centimeters on here, um, this is little, I don't know if you'd call it a ruler, but a measurement increment on two of the sides. It's made by a company called Huion, and um, like I said, I got it like two years ago. I think it was $80. I bought it on Amazon, and um, I have been like really happy with it. I really like it. Um, I like that it's bigger. allows me to do a lot of different sized work. Um, it's pretty thin, probably quarter, a half inch, um, and relatively light. And so it's just got the one button, just and you hold it down until you think it's bright enough. So um, I'd actually say that the button is my least favorite part of it. Because what you do is you just, I don't know why you guys can see this, but you just hold down this button until you think it's bright enough, if the button works. So see, the button's touchy. I don't know why it, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. There we go. Okay, so, but it's touchy. You just sort of hold it down until you think it's bright enough and then you press it again and it slowly dims out. And um, that sort of stripey thing, it doesn't do that in real life. It's just, that's what it looks like on the camera. Um, it just dims, you know, it just fades in real life. But I don't like that button. I don't like that feature. It's touchy. Sometimes when I'm trying to make it brighter, I accidentally turn it off and vice versa. So that's the only thing I don't like about this particular light board. Um, but other than that, I've been happy with it. And then this other light board that I had up here earlier, is made by a different company called uh, DB Meyer. And um, uh, full disclosure, the company actually contacted me, this company, DB Meyer, contacted me a couple months ago and asked me if um, they could send me one of their light boards um, for me to review if I liked it. And um, since I was going to do this video anyway, I just thought I would throw it in if I did like it. So they sent it to me and I didn't have um, super high expectations. I didn't think it would be bad, but you know, I liked my other light board. So I didn't really think much of it and think I'd be wowed, but I, I really, I do like it better than the other one and mainly for the button. <laughs> um, as previously shown, the other one has a sort of touchy nature. So this one, you just hit it. It's got three settings. One, two, three. It's got three distinct settings. If I hit the button, <laughs> um, it's got three distinct settings and I really like that about it. I always use the brightest setting for watercolor. Um, just because, again, thick paper, but you could use the other two that are dimmer. You could definitely use them for um, illustrative stuff. I usually use them for illustrative stuff. Um, it's also got little measurements here, and it's a little bit thinner than the other one, probably just a little less than a quarter inch, just a little shy. And um, it's, I think it's the A3 size. The D.B. Meyer Company makes a couple different sizes. Um, and uh, let me show you one other feature that's sort of interesting about it. So... Um, I thought this was interesting when it came in the mail. And sorry, I'm just unplugging it here. Okay, so the end that it came with is this little USB end, which was kind of surprising to me. You know, I thought it would come with a socket or a wall plug, <laughs> whatever is the correct terminology, um, because the other one did. The Huion has um, just a normal plug. But this has a little USB. So some people might not like this feature, but um, I personally do because what it means is I can use this with my computer. So I can plug this thing into my computer and sit at my computer and use it. Um, because I actually keep my laptop um, 
a bit away from a um, wall socket. So normally I would have to run a couple extension cords to be able to use a light board while using my computer or while watching a show on my computer, which is what I would normally be doing. Um, so anyway, I like that feature about it. And um, I actually, uh, since that's not 100% practical though, because sometimes you'd want to use it in a wall socket, I actually went and I took this little piece off of my phone charger and I had an extra one lying around, so it's not really a problem. And I plug this in and then you plug that into the wall and then it can be both ways. You can use just um, your computer or you can actually plug it into the wall. So um, I would say that's the only thing that I was kind of like could be a bad thing. I think that if they had included this piece, that might be better if it came with um, one of these little adapters. But you know, I had this lying around. I didn't mind. A lot of phone chargers are this way. Um, or tablet chargers or whatever. So I kind of like that it can be both. Like to me, this was a pro, but to some people, I think it could be a con. So that's my only that's my only sort of footnote. Um, and actually, I tried out something else that I think is cool because this size, I really like it. It could like fit in my backpack, I think. And um, I would love to use it for plain air painting. I'm not sure why you'd have to trace um, while plain air painting, but or plein air painting, whatever the correct pronunciation is. But um, I wanted to see if I could use it with this uh, power bar that I use to charge my phone on the go, because this has a USB ending. So let me show you. I was pleasantly surprised. Let's see. It works. I mean, how cool is that? It works by plugged in, plugging into my phone power bar. So I don't need a wall socket or my computer if I have one of these. So you, it's really like I could really use it 100% portable if I bring this, like portable power. So I think that that's a really cool feature um, of this particular one. And uh, the company is actually very generous and they are offering my subscribers a 30% off uh, code for their light box, um, for this light box. And I'll put that in the description along with a link to this particular one. If you wanted to check it out, I think it's normally $30, um, but the coupon code brings it down to near 20. So that's a really good deal. Like I said, I paid $80 for my other one. And although it was bigger still, this that's a really good deal for $20. Um, cause I, I do like the functionality of this one a bit better with the button and with the USB options. So, um, for me, you know, this is, as a review, from a review standpoint, I really like it. I would buy it with my own money if um, if I had to do it again. So really good. And like I said, check out that code if you want to have a deal um, off of one and if you don't already have a light box. Uh, so, so there's that. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody so much for watching. Um, if this video was a help to you, please hit the like button and the subscribe button to see more videos like it. And I will see you all next time. Bye.